Coming at you raw and unfiltered. He's not afraid to talk about anything, and I love that. It's Ricky Smiley Unleashed. I got something to say. All right, y'all, Ricky Smiley, the morning show. Hey, the time right now is 12 minutes, 12 minutes after the hour, y'all. All right, here we go. Back to school is about to start in uh, football season. It's about to start. Kids already, I know my nephew is, they already go, uh, having football practice and getting the kids ready, getting the kids warmed up and stretched out and ready for a nice little football season. And uh, I want to give a shout out to all the dads out there, all the participating, wonderful, awesome fathers out there, all of the, uh, the uncles that play a father role or try to be something to a kid, all of the... Uh, Football coaches, basketball coaches, baseball, soccer, whatever your kid play, trying to be something uh, to the kids that don't have a father. Some kids uh, uh, don't have a father at all because their father's dead or locked up or um, or, or whatever it may be. But uh, one of the things that I want to stress today is uh, emasculation. Mm. I, I really want to talk about emasculation, and I see a lot of it. And a lot of times I see it, man, and I, I keep my mouth shut because it ain't my business, but uh, it goes on. It, it goes on in, in my family. It has happened to me. Uh, uh, when I, uh, And I want to just, just, just to get it started, uh, somebody get, give me the definition of emasculation. Read it off right quick. All right, now that's to make a man feel less masculine, to deprive a man of his male strength, role, et cetera, to make something weaker or less effective. Right. It's called, yeah, and that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about when I say emasculation. You know, uh, I'm in a lot of co-parenting situations. I got uh, I got cousins. I have a sister. Uh, with, I got a niece and nephew. Their father is deceased. He died of cancer. And I got some cousins all over the country who have kids and they're younger cousins or whatever. And I just have, like, I have to have this conversation because one of the worst things you could do as a single mom and we know that you used to being in control and you have custody of the kids and they're your kids. But if, if any man, whether it's an uncle or whether it's a coach or whether it's a teacher, principal, cousin or whatever, you know, sometimes, you know, especially with the little boys, kind of let the man uh, do his thing. You know, as long as he's not mistreating the child or whatever, or sit down and have a conversation about how you parent at home. So he can be a little bit more sensitive and, you know, to, to, to the needs of the child or whatever. Because these little boys, man, they just need to be a little bit tougher. Mm -hmm. Little boys just a little too sensitive. Come and I now. know y'all mothers doing the best y'all can, but I see it at a whole nother level. My granddad had to uh, walk on the football field and get my grandmama and escort her off the field because she didn't understand Coach Holmes and Coach Doug Osley getting in my face. Because, man, if it weren't for that little small football field at Tarrant Recreation Center, those little Tarrant Wildcats changed my whole life. You know what I'm saying? And my granddaddy told my grandmama, leave him. I heard him. Leave him alone. Let him get tough. He need to be out there on the football field. I remember Coach Oliver put his foot in my ass, making me push that sled. You know, and it just made me tough. Uh, it made me obsessed with the game of football. But uh, it just made me tough not having a father. And my granddaddy, man, allowed me to play Little League football. And I played it my whole life before I started playing at East Lake. And, and it just made me the person that I am today, the discipline, the structure. But but it wasn't it wasn't no un my granddaddy did not allow undermining. Because whatever he said, that was the bottom line. Even when I would try to run to my grandma, she said, well, you know, your granddaddy said this. And that's just what it's going to be, okay? And that's the end of it. That's the end of it. You know, you might not like it. But, man, if, if you got a man, a cousin, a uncle, if a man is trying to be anything to your kids, ladies, allow him to toughen up your little boys. These little boys around here, man, so weird. Walking around with these little skinny, sagging jeans with their little cell phone, the way they hold their cell phone, the way they look in their cell phone. It's a whole weird generation out here, and they ain't tough. And I see these little young kids. 19, 20, 25 years old, they don't even know how to walk up and introduce themselves like a man. They don't know how to shake hands. They don't know how to, hey, Mr. Smiley. Now, you can tell, and I'm going to tell you something. I can tell when somebody had a man in their life. These little young men, it'd be some dudes 20, 21, 22, or whatever, know how to walk up and give you a firm handshake and make eye contact. 
I'm talking about to shake your hand and, and they discipline they manhood to me. They let they saying to me, I'm a man, I'm a young man, and ain't nothing to be messed with. Nice to meet you. My name is Terrell West. My name is TJ West. My name is Malik Smiley. A strong, firm handshake, not dapping, not gripping up with the hug, that first initial handshake. Some of that stuff is so important. And I see a lot of y'all mothers doing the best you can because you don't know any better. I'm not fussing at you. I'm not arguing with you today. I'm not trying to undermine anything you're doing. But, man, please find a real man and put them in your kid's life, especially if you got sons. Put them in. Put them, let, them, let those men be a part of their life. And whatever they say, just say, hey, hey, he's trying to help you out. Okay, you're not going to like everything he do, Okay. All right, so just let it ride and toughen up. Stop being so sensitive. Whatever he say, just go on and let it ride. He ain't doing nothing but trying to make a man out of you. That's what my grandma used to tell me. Your granddad ain't doing nothing but trying to make. Why Why we got to cut grass at 530 in the morning with the dew still on the ground with all the grass <laughs> sticking to your feet and you can't hardly cut the damn grass because the dew still on the ground or whatever. But 9 o'clock, you, you eating breakfast. You already cut a whole front and backyard. And that don't do nothing but make you feel good to sit on the front porch and look at that beautiful yard you just cut. And I'm talking about seven, eight, six, seven, eight years old out there cutting the grass. And I promise you, my grandmama did not undermine my granddaddy. Whatever he said went. You know, y'all kiss him in the mouth all up until they 13, 14, got two earrings, tattoos, and letting them be whatever. You know what I'm saying? And when men be like, hey, you know, you got to take them earrings out. You can't walk around the house and just be this way. You got to pull your pants up. You know I'm saying you got to go out here and do some yard work. You can't sit up in my house and play PlayStation all day and you eating three meals a day and flushing the toilet every 30 seconds or whatever and using up water and light or whatever and you ain't contributing nothing to the house. So even with my daughters, we do meal prep. They ain't going to sit up in here and eat. Hey, you do. You got Tuesday and Thursday and then you got uh, Mondays and Wednesday, and I'll cook on Fridays. You need to do a meal prep. Let me cash app you. You go on up to uh, Walmart or whatever and get everything you're going to get to prepare a meal because you need to be prepared to feed your family as a woman. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and they're going to have family someday. Your young men are going to have a house someday. How do he do He don't know how to take care of a house if he don't, you don't make him go in the yard and do anything. Protect it from the mosquito. Let him get used to some mosquito bites. Let him go out here and make some mistakes where he can learn. I know how to change my own oil. Y'all don't know nothing about putting that car up on the curb and sliding up under there with a an oil pan and, un, and and take that oil cap loose and then take the uh, oil filter off and, and drain all of that oil and put a new filter on and, and change your own oil. You save yourself about $30, 40 $50. You know what I'm saying? That's what my granddaddy did for me, and I thank God for my grandmother because she did not emasculate my granddaddy. Whatever he said went. And everything that you like about me and things on this, like this segment that I talk about on the show, it came from Ernest Lee Smiley. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Maddie Smiley, for allowing my granddaddy to do all of this stuff. So I just want to give you that advice. So find an uncle, find a coach, find an associate pastor, a deacon, a friend, a high school classmate. Come on, y'all. Everybody went to Woodlawn. You know, you know it's a single mother in your class or whatever. Hey, hey, uh, Teresa, I'm going to go and grab the kids today. I'm taking my kids to the Universal Circus. Uh, if your kids want to go, they can come. And they can come one weekend out of the month or whatever, kick it with us or whatever. I know they don't have a dad. I don't want to get into You don't have to get into the situation. You know it's the need there. Do the right thing because it'll be one of those, one of those kids that'll take care of you before your own would. I'm talking about you know where you've been, but you don't know where you're going. You don't know who you're going to need. So my message is all over the place, but y'all understand my point. You know, fellas, step up to the plate. If you got a little extra man, God going to give a little extra for you. Do something to somebody that don't have nothing. Don't just be selfish. Go and grab another pair of kids. If you got a little extra some some, and take them to the circus or the zoo. Football practice, you know, shout out to uh, Mr. Greg Turner that encouraged me to play Little League football. He said, you need to get on this truck. And you need to go play Little League football. And I, I, I went to uh, football practice with Kermit one day. And uh, and it changed my whole life. And I was riding that truck every day going to Little League practice. And Mr. Greg used to get on me all the time. Uh, Coach Holmes, 
Coach Osley, Coach Henderson, Coach Robinson, man, those are some of the best things that ever happened in my life. My little league football coaches, and I love them all. Hey, but I just want to share that with y'all. Thank y'all, and I hope y'all uh, find that message encouraging. Get your, pair your kids up with somebody, and don't undermine. Let a man be a man, and allow them the opportunity to uh, put something into your boys' life, especially the little boys. So God bless you. I hope that message did something to you so well, your kids won't be sensitive around here with skin and jeans on, switching and taking <laughs> selfies with a filter. <laughs> switching. Switching and carrying on. Garish T is up next. Speaking of, speaking of switching. <laughs> Ricky Smiley Morning Show.